Heat TV presents Homework Hotline, the after-school show that fuses learning with fun. Watch local teachers bring the classroom on air and online. This is Homework Hotline. Welcome to Homework Hotline. My name's Pam Halstead and I taught science at Fortuna High School. And my name's Ken Pinkerton and I taught science at Zane Middle School. Yay for science! Yay, <laughs> We're about to highlight someone who's super into science. Right. Ken, you're the... In, no, not, no one less than Benjamin Franklin. So, yes. So you might have heard of Benjamin Franklin. He was an amazing fellow. Uh, if you're lucky, you are familiar with his picture on the $100 bill. Mm -hmm. um, and what do you think? So, so he was uh, not only... Um, I'm going to flip through here. Sure. Um, he was a writer, a statesman, a d diplomat for both uh, the United States and when we were colonies. Uh, he was a printer and a publisher, and so a lot of things like Stitch in Time Saves Nine and... and uh, yes, he came uh, up with those little, uh, yeah, little sayings. Yeah, sayings and, yes. and uh, fish and company starts to smell after three days. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and uh, for us, he was a scientist and an, an inventor. Um, and so some of the cool things we want to look at today are some of his inventions. So I'm going to maybe go to... Um, and then one of the other things is he was a, very much so an inventor. Uh, he was one of the first people to suggest that the colonies unite together and, and work together for a common good. And so this mm -hmm. is a neat, um, it was join or die with the, um, the picture of the snakes saying that if they didn't unite that the British were going to. I think President Lincoln said something like that as well. Right, united we stand and divided, divided we, we fall. fall. Yeah, mm -hmm. so very much so. Yep. And then uh, one of the things we're going to talk about today is his, uh, he came up with these things that he called double spectacles. So he, as he was aging, he uh, did what a lot of human beings do, is that uh, he had vision not only um, hard seeing things far away, but also close up. And so he required two sets of glasses to do that. So you might know people who've got reading glasses. Me! <laughs> uh, no, I have bifocals. No, bifocals, I have bifocals, right? yeah. Yeah, and so he came up with a, uh, the, this amazing invention. <laughs> Well, May I just add that mine are called progressive, so yeah, you, can't you can't see, see the base, but yeah. it's blended in, so I am able to just look down. And it, it, you have to train yourself because as you read, you can't go as far back and forth as you would <laughs> like know, to sometimes. Yeah. So, but anyway, it's very helpful, extremely yeah. helpful. So Franklin came up with this idea. He showed up, at, uh, the story goes, he showed up at this party with a pair of glasses that had a split in them. And I think I've got oh, a picture yes. of one of those. Uh, whoops, maybe not. Um, we'll come. So that that's kind of a close up. And let me go see if I can find the picture like that oh, so, yeah. so, so um, at the time they didn't have a fancy technology but he very wisely mm -hmm. just took his two sets of glasses or had somebody do it and he put his far vision mm -hmm. for the top part and his um, and some people really appreciate this because you know exactly where you're supposed to look yeah, I, whereas with uh, mine you just you have to figure it out over time and it can be it. difficult yeah. yeah so this is cool so we're gonna explore some lenses today so so you probably um, Played around with some lenses, or hopefully you have magnifying glasses. And, and yes. so, um, anything that is uh, that is thicker in the middle, that's clear, then on the edges will be a magnifying um, lens. And so, even this ball, crystal balls. Um, if I hold it up to my eye, I don't know if the camera can zoom in. I don't know which camera to look. I'll go to that one. Is you should be able to see that my eye is greatly magnified. And it's in turned there. upside down. Yeah, and it's turned upside down. Yeah. But if I move it close, is it still upside down? A prop, uh, it's hard to see. <laughs> it's see. It's, it's hard, hard to see, yeah. But now we can do the same thing with, um, oh, yeah. with these different lenses Okay. Um, that they magnify. And then part of the, the, so all of these lenses are thicker in the middle than on the edges. And then that curve, the way light travels is that when it hits the surface between two a medium, then it, it refracts, it's called, it bends slightly. So it's going through the air and then it's going through glass. Right. That's, that's when he says medium, that's what he's talking right. about. So the things in the middle go straight through, but the things on, uh, the farther out you get, the more of a curve you get. And the other thing is these are transparent mediums, so right. like water works as long as the uh, water's right. clean, the water right. works as well. Yeah. And then by that thickness and, and things, we get different magnifiers. Mm -hmm. So if we hold these up, um, and I think you've got some too. Oh, yes, I you, do. Yes, I do. You can see that uh, we should have bigger eyes. or. Um, <laughs> and then the, the other neat thing about it is that there's a definite pattern that, that the light goes through almost a cone shape, or it is a cone shape. Yes. And, and so there's a, if you've ever had one playing outside, um, you get a really hot spot. Sometimes you can burn your name in wood, or, or mm -hmm. it's a way to start fires. Um, 
And then after that, it, it, it Don't inverses. try this at home. Yeah, don't try this at home. <laughs> okay. But what neat thing to do is to take your, your magnifying glass and move it away from your eye, and things get bigger and bigger and bigger, and, and then it gets fuzzy when you're right at that spot, and then everything turns upside down. Mm -hmm. And it's because you're on the other side of that that double cone, basically. And that's what and happens inside your eye, which is what Ken's going to talk about yeah, as well. Yeah, we're going to talk about now. So yeah. um, let me see if I can go forward and see if we can find. I can go backwards. Go back, right? Yeah. There we go. Yeah. I think a Thank couple you. of slides. Yeah. There so, you go. Um, so your eye uh, has a, a lens in the front of it. Um, and then on the very the lining in the back of it is your retina, and that's the there are special cells that transfer light uh, into um, signals that go to your brain, and then your brain interprets it. And in the perfect eye, uh, you get uh, a wonderful uh, images, no matter if you're looking at something closer or not, because our lens is is, is elastic, and so those mm -hmm. little muscles that can stretch it thinner. Um, or make it go wider and so you can focus on things. And sometimes you can feel your eyes actually doing that. And it gets um, less uh, elastic at the older that you right, get. You, so a lot of times people who are older are, are, do require glasses, especially reading glasses. Right. Because you see an older person holding something yeah. farther away from them. So and then I'm going to see, whoops. <laughs> we almost lost her. <laughs> and then I want to show this. This one, okay, so this is the perfect lens here, if we can have the, this, uh, so you can see the light bounces off of whatever it is, so in this case it's a, a woman standing, and it goes through the eye, and then it's, it's projected upside down on the back of your eye, um, and, and perfectly, and then your brain interprets that signal to, uh, to what it is. Mm -hmm. um, but sometimes that It flips it right side up. And we can show some of that here, so we've got some different lenses, and we'll show you, yeah, and you can try this at home. So the reason we have the light is that's gonna be our projector, and then we've got this yellow screen. So, okay. um, and we're gonna try to show how the, the there, there it is. So you can see as Pam moves that in, we, oh, perfect. Yeah, it's projecting an image right here on the screen. Mm -hmm. If we can come in even closer, I don't know if they can. If I can, I think, um, so the focal length of this of this particular lens here is the distance from the lens to the uh, the, the image. Right, or well, the image distance. The is image the, distance, thank and you. I think the focal length there is like is. halfway. Oh, halfway, oh, that's good, pretty, thank you for that's that. That's really nice. Okay. So we can get a, a perfect projection of of that light that, mm -hmm. that's there. So, cool. Ooh, nice, that's a good camera shot there. So, and if she moves in a little bit, if, her, if the lens is out of focus, which is some, you want me to, I'm um, moving in. You mean or towards the out. light? Yeah, well, I'm just showing them how if you're, the lens is not in the perfect space, then it becomes kind of fuzzy. Smaller, fuzzy, yeah. let me go this way. That yeah. is really oh, fuzzy yeah, and bigger. Bigger, right. So, so it's getting smaller. So, so, so but when, and when you wear glasses, they put another lens that adjusts it, so it either uh, brings it that, that image perfectly uh, moves it forward or it moves it back so it's it's hitting your retina at the mm -hmm. perfect spot neat so um, so that's how lenses work very cool so try that it, this it, is a special kind there's two different kinds of lenses there's convex and concave and concave so if it's thinner in the middle it, it actually um, this is thicker in the middle that, yeah it, it actually spreads it out and, and with right. a, with a, a concave mirror you can't make an image you cannot yeah, no yeah. so it it's called a, a real image I guess and then there's virtual images um, which we can kind of do a quick cool. tangent on that I don't nice. know if the cameras can pick up on this but this is a cool virtual image yeah, that's crazy. And this has got, um, this is a neat toy you can get. It's a, a concave mirror. and uh, It has an one. actual thing inside. So it's got a little plastic frog. There's a frog. And then you can put it in there, I think. You can see, try to turn it. You know, if the camera can come in real close on that, you might be able to see the virtual image. I think mm. even closer, but there's the top of it. And so it looks like there's a frog right there, but I put my finger through it, and the frog's not there. No frog. Yes. Yeah, so, mm -hmm. so, so that's a virtual image mm -hmm. rather than, than, a, than a real image. So, yeah, so try that with different lenses. So take them um, and adjust it with a wall. You can turn the lights off in your house and uh, do it on the wall of your house mm -hmm. or any of those things. So, um, so that's lenses Neat. and how your eyes work. So, so the next thing I want to talk about is probably the thing that, that Franklin is, is most known for is his discovery I'll go to the next one. about lightning. Yeah. I can do that. So, so this is another lens yeah, picture. Another lens. And there so, we go. Okay. Well, uh, lightning. So, um, so I learned a lot about, the, with the Ken Burns thing, is that uh, um, 
that Franklin went to Europe and he was an ambassador um, and at that time there was a real scientific revolution going on and so he met a lot of people that were doing experiments with electricity mm -hmm. and he became fascinated with it um, and brought some of the equipment home with him and made some of his own equipment um, cool. and um, so he discovered some of the, the amazing found fundamentals of, of, of electricity which I didn't wasn't aware of. He came up with the concept that electricity has a positive and a negative. So if you look at any battery, a DC battery, you'll notice it's got a positive and a negative. And then the other thing he And that what that means is there's more electrons or less electrons. So right. like negative you think, oh more electrons is plus. Right. But negatives have an I mean electrons have a negative charge. Right. So that means there's more in the negative than right. there's the flowing. positive. And then they flow, which was another thing that he discovered, uh, was th that there was and he called it current. Mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. and, and he came up with the idea of conductors uh, that uh, you probably know about. Uh, a conductor like on a train helps people yeah, move. And then there's a, the next picture I think sure, is uh, things that, that uh, electricity will pass through are called uh, conductors and things that it doesn't pass through are um, insulators. And those are important, especially in our day and age where we use a lot of electricity that we need to stop it from going some places <laughs> like our bodies and right, things, right. things like that. So those are the, mm -hmm. the insulators on the conductors. Um, and then uh, I'll show you, this is a, a piece so of So you wouldn't want to be con touching a conductor when you were around an electrical uh, right. field, right? Yeah, definitely so. You weren't in a bathtub. Yeah. In a bathtub that has your dissolved right, electrolytes in it. <laughs> right, yeah, if it's yeah. just pure water, it's not in a conductor, but if but it if is, yeah. Not, so, All yeah. right, so here so we go. So this is a, an ancient um, around, uh, <laughs> that Franklin probably had one of these or something similar, and this is called the Wimhurst machine. Cool. And the way it works is it's got two disks that travel in different directions, um, and, it, and in doing so, they create a static charge. And so we, we can show you some of the things. Kay. So he probably had something like this, and he messed around with it. And you can hear the little sparks. Because of the studio lights, it's really bright. But then there's these things down on the bottom that are called Leiden jars, and it's a, uh, just a glass jar that's got a lining of, of uh, foil around the inside and the outside. And then notice when I turn them on, we're going to send electricity through them, it becomes what's now called a capacitor, and you can get a lot more of a charge. Ooh. And then so you can see right here, we've got about, what, it's about a two centimeter gap or so? So that's about 20,000 volts if we can get about every centimeter is about 10,000 volts. If I go faster, will it make it happen faster? It might. Okay. You know, you can try and see. And, and so... Uh, yeah! So people were fascinated with this um, and... and um, this reminds me of a Frankenstein movie. Does, <laughs> this is, and this Wimpers machine is what they used uh, to power X-ray, the first X-ray machines, that they had enough power oh, to, wow. to turn them on. That's so, amazing. Um, so Franklin made this connection between, hey, this spark seems to be a lot like lightning. Mm -hmm. um, and he came up with some other um, discoveries, which we can, we can explore a little bit. Okay. I want to move that. Nice. Um, and this is... This, Do this we have another slide? Are we on a new slide or not? Um, we can try. I'll see. Okay, I'll check. Let's see where we're at. Franklin's Leiden jar battery. Yeah, okay. Yeah, let's hear that one. That's what we so, we did. And now... So Are we going still? If we can go back to the lighting jar. Will do. So, Got it. So okay. at the bottom of that Wimpers machine we just had, it just had two little jars. And so Franklin came up with this idea of putting like, well, there's just... A lot. Like a whole bunch of One, two, three, four. Five times, One, two, three, four, like 35 five, of those together. Yes. And so he got these massive charges, enough to, to knock him on his butt. Mm. Uh, uh, um, and uh, so there's a great quote that it mm. says, electricity is useful for making a vain person very humble. Because if, Someone who thinks a lot of themselves you, will not if, when if they you, get knocked on the rear end if, once they're touching something that is shocking and uh, right. is painful, yeah. actually. Yeah, and then some of his contemporaries, too, sorry. Um, would do experiments and it, it would kill them. They, oh, they dear. Right. That. So, sure, that makes sense. So this is called the Van de Graaff generator, which was invented much later on, but kind of the same principle. We have a belt inside. So I'm going to mm -hmm. turn it on. Okay. And this is another discovery that he made. So what's happening with the doll head is it's being covered with static electricity. Um, electrons. Uh, electrons. Well, I mean electrons, right. which then are repelling right. each the, other. Yeah, there's a light charge. Yeah. And then so what Franklin noticed is if when he had things like this, if he put his finger in or something sharp, oh, then it would take that away is so cool. the charge. Because there's more electrons on this than it is on your yeah. hand, so your they, finger. They so there's an attraction. But if he did it with his hand like this, not so much. So, oh. so he came up. With, so he, this was an important discovery that sharp things take away charges. 
Um, but dull things, not so much. But you can see that. So, um, And so th that got him to thinking. Could that be like a smaller surface area and a larger surface area could related to that? Or no? It's anything that's, that's pointed. So oh, pointed, OK. Yeah, yeah. So, so if you do, all right. try the, the um, uh, the back, turn that around backwards. Or you can try it first. Like this way? Yeah. Okay. I don't oh, think it'll so shock cool. you. Okay. <laughs> I'm so hoping not. if I do this. <laughs> yeah, so, it's but like now turn it, turn it around the other way and see if it does it so much. Not, not, not as much. Oh Oops. my goodness, <laughs> I'm getting shocked. <laughs> this was a really fun thing to humble? have in a classroom. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, very humble, very humble. I used to have this in the classroom, and, and yes. so you can actually make a chain of students uh, that hold hands until, yeah. Yeah. But then the last person can shock other people. Yeah. It's, it's a fun <laughs> thing. <laughs> it's fun to watch 30 kids jump at once. Oh, my goodness, yeah. <laughs> it was my, one of my yeah. favorites. It's not so. uh, harmful, really. Uh, no. It just is, it scares you, because you know how it is when you're sitting on a, a rug, or you rub your feet on a rug, right. and then you, you pick up the electrons, and then you touch, or cats, because yeah. they have such... Their hair is all right. close together. Or um, I noticed uh, if it's a dry summer, if kids are sliding down those plastic slides, they get great static charges. They yes. Hair their, or jumping on trampolines. So about that pointed thing, is that like on a church, on a church steeple? That's, that's we're Something? coming to that. Oh, OK, we're coming okay. to that. OK, so, um, why is I'm going so too fast? So Franklin came up with this idea of, of um, he wanted to, uh, that it was an issue that, nice uh, that buildings, <laughs> like him. buildings were um, her him getting hit by lightning yes. um, and you know and people were getting hit by lightning and yes. and uh, injured or set things on fire or one of the this uh, is a reenactment everyone this, yeah, this is Hold a on model. just a second that's one of this um, okay, so, so he came see. up with this uh, his idea was to um, if he took a whole bunch of metal rods that, that were pointed and stuck them in the ground um, that he could uh, dissipate like lightning storms that, that he could he could stop uh, lightning from happening. If you can mm. back, that, back that up a little bit more. Yes, backing. Uh, 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 more? That way, all the way. So okay, can, all the way. Wait, um, you mean moved stuff? So he had this idea <laughs> of, of putting these rods all over the place. And um, his original idea was to um, take a room. Um, like that? Yeah, perfect. Okay. okay. Um, to take a room like on a high, uh, a high point on a hill or in a high building. So he was going to do it in this church that was under construction, uh, but the church kept getting slower and slower, so he couldn't build it. And there was a little bit, of, I think, of an ego race, too, that people were trying to discover this. Oh, yes. So he came up with this idea that he'd take his son out with a, a kite. <laughs> and it was, it was a, a storm coming. Um, and it wasn't lightning yet. Um, don't try this at home. Yeah, don't try this at home. <laughs> so he had this silk-covered co kite oh. with a metal rod in it, and then he had a string that, mm -hmm. that would conduct static electricity. Mm -hmm. It was made out of uh, hemp, I think. Uh, uh, and he put a key on it. Um, so here's my thing. So pretend there's a kite at the end of this. So he put a key on it, and, and he sent his, his kite into the cloud. And then he stood by, and in between him, he had another silk scarf that uh, he did. So okay. th this is another Van de Graaff that's hand-powered. And pretend this is a cloud. This is the nice. graphics for it. Um, and after a while, he noticed that the, the thread on the, uh, on the string was all standing up, which meant it had a charge. And oh. so then he touched the key, and he got a shock. He got a little shock. Mm. Let's see if we can do it. Yeah. And then so let's see if you can hear. So go ahead and charge it up, and then stop for a sec. Okay, and stop. Yeah, and then let's see if I can hear the shuck. Yeah. Oh, so yes. there's a little one. So this, and this was a revolutionary idea that connected the charges in the atmosphere as electricity. That yes. was related to electricity. Wow. Um, and he didn't fly it in a lightning storm because that could be deadly. He just he, oh, he good. put it up. You know, around he knew the big storm was coming in, and so they flew it up into the clouds, mm -hmm. um, where the charges are because of the water molecules are moving past each other. Um, and he connected that um, that there, that was the electricity. That those are the same sparks as he was seeing on his um, on his experiments. Neat. So, so this was like a revolutionary idea. So we can try. Do you want to try it? You sure, wanna, sure, you? I would love to. Okay. Um, so, I'll, I'll put the cloud up. Yes. So he's got his kite in there. So one of the things about the grant that, that is um, that I'm building exhibits for the Discovery Museum. So this is a prototype of, a, of a, an exhibit you'll be able to hopefully go check out soon at the Discovery Museum. And you, cool. can, you can charge it up and then... Now? Yeah. Oh, 
know. <laughs> it's scary. Less than I mean, it just you just feel it just a little just bit. A teeny, but teeny it's bit. scary. You know how that is. That's right. And then I found that the best, mm -hmm. if you do it with your knuckles or your your folded back fingers, it doesn't hurt nearly as much. Oh wow, that's good. That's yeah. right. There's more yeah. nerves at the yeah. end of your fingers. So David Howard, your fingertips. That one, so. Oh, smart. So that, I should have paid attention. <laughs> so um, neat. So then they took this information and they, uh, he came up with the idea of a lightning rod. Mm. Um, that um, at first, like I said, they were going to put in, uh, you know, f all around the towns or anywhere you were wanted to to prevent uh, electrical lightning strikes. Um, they just put these things in the ground, but that's not where the charge is at. It, it's pretty high up up in the atmosphere. Mm -hmm. So then they started installing them on churches, um, and this is a neat model that a friend. Named Robert Wicke, he lives in Fortuna. He's a blacksmith, and this is a, a model. This is about half size of um, of a, a, a very used uh, lightning rod from the Franklin Museum. Oh, um, wow. And so I think the original is about two or three times bigger than this. Hmm. And I, I suspect that at one time it was straight, <laughs> or the, right. the original was. Yes. But uh, it got hit too many times yeah, by lightning. Yeah. Or just <laughs> just kidding. It was in the dumper <laughs> or something. I oh, don't know sure. What happened to it? Um, but he started putting them on churches because, and it saved them. Um, and what was funny was that there was a big controversy over them uh, because uh, some people thought that lightning was uh, God's divine intervention. Right, yeah, that meaning it was an that it, he didn't that he like was, you, he was going to zap right, it you was with a punishment the or punishment, some consequence. Right. Um, but what was ironic about that was that churches were often the tallest buildings in a community, mm. and so they were the most often struck. Yes. Um, and so some churches wouldn't allow him to put up um, the lightning rods or didn't want anybody to put them up. Because um, you're interfering with the Lord. Right. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> well. So, um, and so, and then there's, if we go on a little bit, sure. there's, there's some pictures of, yeah, there's, so there's a, a, a um, church that was hit by lightning. Oh, and my. And then one of the very sad things was that um, in Germany, over a period of a very short time, uh, bell, there were many, there were 30 bell ringers killed by lightning strikes. So they'd be in, in the, standing at the base of the, the church tower, or the bell tower, ringing the bells, and the lightning would hit the, the tower mm, or the bell itself. And it'd be passed along. And it would, yeah, and it would like kill. Like there's one of them as an example right. on the right. Yeah, yeah. So, so it was a, it was a dangerous task. No kidding, <laughs> for them gee, many Christmas. And then I think the next slide. Okay, um, got it shows that's the century box that, that, that other scientists did, that, that one's in Europe, where mm -hmm. they built a little house um, and then put the rod sticking out and oh, yeah. um, it, would, it would attract the charges. It wouldn't be mm -hmm. hit by lightning because mm -hmm. they would definitely kill them. So um, it's called grounding, is it? That yeah, and then grounding. So yeah, so the important part of this is you would stick this in on top of your building and then run a wire down into a pole mm. that was deep in the ground. Mm -hmm. um, um, so your house wouldn't get look like that church. Yeah, certainly. It yeah. would take the charge down. Mm -hmm. um, and it might give you a little bit of a singe, but it wouldn't destroy your house. Right. And then, so if you look around Eureka, actually, I found one on F Street. There's a wonderful Victorian, and it's got a beautiful um, lightning rod on, on oh. the roof of it. So I think Neat. one of the next slides okay. is, um, got it. is some lightning rods, some, kind of the fancier ones. Um, th I think that's, mm. oh, that's so that's his that's his demonstration with his, his son. son right cool yeah, so the next, next one, one and that's Franklin's oh okay, yeah this is wow by Robert Wiki is the guy who did this one nice. and then okay then that's the Modern. so look around Eureka on some of the old Victorians that they have mm -hmm. um, some of them are very fashionable like the one that's on the left, I guess, mm -hmm. um, and then the, the new modern ones. This that one was actually on eBay for six hundred and fifty dollars. <laughs> oh wow! <laughs> and so it looks very high tech, but I suspect it's just uh, a, a big heavy wire that goes to the ground. Yeah. So, right. um, but keep an eye out for them. So, and then before Thursday, I'll try and get out and take a picture of the one that's there. No, um, neat. That's great. And then let's see what else I've got there. Okay. And then another thing that that Franklin came up with. Um, so we'll be shocked, Franklin, enough. Um, yes, I think was, so. It's what, that, very impressive. They called them lightning bells or lightning alarms. Okay. And what they were was um, these little bells. So we'll bring back out our Wimhurst okay, to make more, more electricity. Nice. Um, oh, we're going to make music? And Maybe. Oh, yes. Music. We're going to provide power. And so. Um, Nice. So you would have these just little bell arrangements, and then one of these would go. Would you like me to move it up or down? Uh, I think down. Let's, okay, got let's it. Let's see how much power we can get out of them. 
Look, he's the, attaching conductors to this thing. You would have one of these that would thing. go to the ground, and mm -hmm. then another one would have like a, a big flange on it that would um, get electricity from the air. And when um, a, 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 a thunderstorm was moving your way or a lightning storm was moving your way, these would start ringing. So let's Should see if I we go? can get these to okay. go. It might take a little bit of adjustment for sure. it to go. And you can start seeing, let's see. There we go. So you can see them go back and forth. Okay, mm -hmm. now stop. I don't know if you can hear it's it. Tick, 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 yeah. yeah it's like a tick, tick, it's, tick, tick, it's tick, not tick. hard enough right, for that, but that's still, it's working. Yeah, so, so if, if you had one of these, mm -hmm. and apparently Mrs. Franklin didn't like it at all. She asked him when he was traveling away how to turn it off. Oh, yeah, please, <laughs> so, I don't like this, yeah. So it was, I don't blame her. And the same principles is that uh, with static is that. Do it again. Um, Let's do, we're going to do it yeah, again. Lightning. Here we and, go. Uh, oh, oh, there we go. Much better. Oh, and he just clunk, clunking yeah. around. Yeah, so this was a little bit of a lightning alarm. So I thought, I thought that was pretty neat. And there's the charges there. Let us try it with the. Okay, with without? Okay, yeah, let's, let's try, try that. Let's see if that works better. Sure. I'm going to put it right on the lightning jars. Okay, cool. Or actually, oh. actually, no, I'll just put it okay, on right the, there. There? On those. Yeah. No. Oh, these guys. Not. Okay. Now okay. Let's see. Got let's it. see if we have less. Cool. Nobody likes the bigger charges on me. Wait, wait. There it is. It's pen power. Yeah. <laughs> my, my power is going. My power is Oops. diminishing. Here, you and do your it. Your dog being <laughs> Thor. Thor is appropriate. I know. Yeah, that's true. That's true. The god of the god of lightning. lightning yeah, right? lightning, so. thunder. Yes, yeah, so I think. Cool. Oh, there it goes. Oh yeah, there it goes. Yeah. So whenever you forth. hear the little alarm going off. You'd know that thunder was in, or lightning was in the air, and the reason well, it's doing it is because of useful. the different charges. And so, if it's an opposite charge, it's attracted. So, um, if this was plus and, and that was negative, and then but when they mm -hmm. touch, they they change charges. Right. And then so they then transfer yeah, the they tra particles. Right, yeah. They transfer them over. Neat. And so then it would go on to the next one, and then you have this repeating back and forth and back and loss forth. Of, yeah. Loss of charge. And oh, like that's that. really so. neat. Boy. So your your task for. Uh, Tonight, or until next Thursday, is to find some magnifying glasses and move yes. them in and out. They are um, amazing. Look around um, <laughs> Humboldt or your, wherever you live and see if you can find uh, lightning rods. I would yes. you know, check out churches, especially tall buildings, mm -hmm. uh, cell towers. I know that if we go outside, I bet you we can find lightning oh, rods. Oh, my on, gosh. On. We would hope that they would have them yeah, for sure. Especially for the transmission towers. Yeah, um, that's kind of and, scary. Um, and then there's a, a lot of cool stuff about Franklin Online, and if you have a chance to, to mm -hmm. uh, uh, if you're a member of Keep, I think you can go on their program and you can watch uh, yes. the Ben Franklin, the second one I especially yes, like. Yes, Ken Burns, it's, it's, it's fantastic. Yeah. So we'll see you on hey. Thursday with more fun stuff Thank from, you guys. from uh, Ben Franklin. The mind of Ben Franklin. <laughs> the mind of, yes. Yay. And we'll see you then.